first video part one of this episode I promise that I'm going to show you how I um, lay down the groundwork or the underpainting and the blocking of colors uh, on my ground or canvas um, this is a small uh, stretch canvas it has a solid plywood and a canvas and then I just tacked it and I first I primed the wood the plywood it's a one fourth thick inch of plywood I primed it uh, in both sides with 10 layers of latex paint uh, and it has uh, a variation of uh, the proportion of water and the paint so I'll be creating a separate episode regarding uh, the proportion and my process in priming the wood if you're using a wood and the canvas and then the canvas is primed uh, I only use like four layers of paint of latex also but I see to it that the teeth of the ground of the canvas is still visible yeah and then i sand it yeah and then that's it so i guess let's start hmm. uh, regarding my canvases uh, i usually prepare the small scale canvases and i stretch it from scratch but i have a carpenter I, I would usually ask a carpenter to create the frame or to cut the plywood. Um, usually, uh, I use the the frame only without the wooden backing, or sometimes I use uh, for very small scale canvases. I use the whole plywood. Yeah. Uh, but for larger scale canvases, I have a canvas maker stretched and primed by mark canvas supply that's the name of their face facebook page i think the, the name of the owner is also mark so you can contact them on facebook on their facebook page yeah mark canvas supply uh, he's from bulacan and they ship nationwide and they can create um various dimension of or scale of uh, canvas especially the large ones yeah yeah, so I'm going to link the page below so you can see it uh, once I upload this video. Let's start with um, staining my canvas, the ground, with an underpainting of burnt sienna. I do this is so that it will be easier for me to to lay down the mid tone of my canvas. The white won't appear so raw, and the dark won't appear too strong when you do underpainting. Sometimes I use uh, the lightest yellow or cadmium yellow light. Sometimes I use, um, it depends on the, the color scheme of my painting, I use a cool, a cool color of uh, red which is alizarin crimson. If I want a warmer tone, I use the cadmium yellow light. But if I want uh, uh, the mid tones to appear uh, subdued, the color subdued, I use burnt sienna. Just a little wall canvas. There's no rule. In applying your your paint using paint brushes, it's better that if it is uni unidirectional. <laughs> yeah. 
cars. Let's say. And sometimes I use the underpainting uh, silver gray. I don't use the color straight from the paint tube, but I mix it. I usually, I, I mix all my colors usually. So this is now the look. So I let it dry uh, for a while. So yeah. If you have some questions regarding this process, you may leave your comments down below. And I'll try my best to reply. So I'll go I'm going to block the basic um, value and color colors of my uh, sea waves sea waves so I'm mixing cerulean blue cerulean blue thalassinin green and and some titanium white here. So blocking. So remember in acrylic paint in using acrylic uh, acrylic medium we start with the lightest color and lightest value. So I'm just going to cover everything. And then, yeah, three strokes, don't overthink. And then, got our color here. As it goes farther, the color darkens. So I'm going to mix some. A little burnt sienna. So I'm going to create like a receding, uh, receding texture of the sea waves. And then the lightest part, I'm going to mix in more white. Well, you can use other white, like um, picking white. What's the other? The zinc white. Awesome. Uh, the the reason why I like titanium white because it's uh, brilliance. It has more brilliance compared to zinc. Zinc has a more toned down whiteness or hue well zinc white is good for mixing of colors you know for mixing lighter lighter uh, value titanium white uh, you can use it if you want really to create a brilliant lighter color So that's the basic color blocking. Let me show it up close. Okay. 
and then I'm going to paint more layers of thin paints on the color blocks and then little by little I'm going to indicate or I'm going to create the shadows And let's start with the details. I'm creating those subtle uh, little waves. So that's uh, the first uh, two layers of thin uh, paints. Uh, so it's still part of the color blocking, so that I would I wouldn't get lost uh, with the details later on when I add more some um, some value or details on the sea waves. And then of course. Um, the the process of how i do the detailing the details or rendering the details and ha enhancing the shadows and the highlights is in the next segment of this video so thank you for watching this segment see you around